we're going to continue to look at simplifying variable expressions, but we're going to throw um, one more issue into these couple examples in that we have parentheses around terms that have like terms outside of the parentheses. All right. So remember in section 3.2 we learned about the distributive property and in these examples the distributive property is really going to be helpful. Okay, so uh, you know, in terms of identifying our like terms, we see that we have an x in here and an x out here. So it seems like I should be able to combine these, but of course, this x is trapped inside parentheses. Okay, same thing with this this y here and this minus three y out here. So we want to start by using our distributive property. Remember, which says we can just take this number on the outside and distribute it through to both of these and multiply 4 by x and 4 by y. Okay. And um, in all of the simplification problems we've done so far, we've always reordered things and set like terms next to each other. If it's a fairly simple case, you don't need to feel the need to do that. Um, so it would be okay to just say, all right, I can see that 4x and 2x are like terms. And so I'm going to say 4x plus 2x is 6x. Right? And I can do the same thing with my y terms, right? So I can see I have a negative 4y is the way we would want to think about it because there's that minus sign in front. But again, we can think about minus signs and negative signs interchangeably. So negative 4y minus 3y would give us negative 7y. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to put all the like terms next to each other first as long as it's a simple enough case. So this is, of course, our simplified answer. I can't put these terms together because they have different variables. All right. So here's uh, another example. We have 2 times x plus y minus 5 times 3 plus y in parentheses minus 2 times 3 minus x. So we can see there's some like terms involved, but we really can't get at them to be able to combine them until we've used the distributive property. So let me rewrite this thing real quick before we do anything else. So we'll just use the distributive property in all three of these spots. And I'm sorry, that's really, really sloppy there. That needs to be a nice clear plus sign. Okay, so we'll distribute our two through to x and to y. So that's gonna give me two times x is two x plus 2 times y. And now we've got this minus 5 times 3 plus y in parentheses. Now remember, if you've got a minus out here, you want to think of this as negative 5 distributing through. Okay, so make sure that whatever symbol's out here follows through the distribution as well as the 5. So we're going to think of negative 5 times 3 is negative 15, so I'm going to put minus 15 right here. And then negative 5 times y is going to be negative 5y, so I will put minus 5y. So you can see how useful it is to be able to think of negatives and minus signs interchangeably. All right, now we have negative 2 times 3. So we have negative six, so minus six. And then be really careful in these situations. This negative two has to go through to this negative x, right? It's minus x, but think of it like a negative x for a moment. Negative two times a negative x is going to give us a positive two x. So I'm actually going to put plus two x. Okay, so whenever you have a minus two times a minus x, Understand that's just going to become plus 2x. Okay, so now let's look at our like terms. So 2x and 2x would combine to make 4x. Okay, 2y 
and minus 5y would combine to make negative 3y, so we're going to put minus 3y. And then, of course, we have our two constants. Negative 15 minus 6 would be negative 15 plus negative 6, so that's negative 21, so I'll put minus 21. So our answer here is 4x minus 3y minus 21.